we've been writing for so long, I was hoping that we'd be able to move on. I came here to see you. That's the only reason I came, was to see if, if you wanted to move maybe further in a relationship. Do you feel like she was the woman that was writing to you? Guys, I'd like you to meet my friend Bobby. Bobby's got a cat, a ray gun collection, that sweet PS3 3D TV setup that was really hot in late 2011. Oh yeah, and he's got a $10,000 deficit in his bank account from sending emails to some random Ukrainian chick. So for some context here, our boy Bobby, just like the rest of us, was having trouble on the traditional dating websites like eHarmony, so he sought out a certain website called aforeignaffair.com, where they set you up with Ukrainian chicks, and you get to send them emails for $10 a pop. $10 to send an email, $10 to receive an email, because you're using their translator service. And sure, you could use Google Translate, but they're setting you up with these hot chicks, so why are you going to bite the hand that feeds? I'll let Bobby explain where it goes from there. And I'm down to one. To be honest, this is probably the one that my eye always came back to. Her name is Julia. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to pause because this part just breaks my heart so much because it's like the way he giggles after saying her name. It reminds me of like when my mom would ask me if I had a crush on any of the girls in my elementary school and I'd be like, well, there is this one girl, Julia. <laughs> Her name is Julia, <laughs> Julia. <laughs> she works in a travel agency, um, uh, incredibly beautiful. We've been writing to each other for, it's gotta be seven, eight months now. Do you have pictures of her? Yeah. How old is she? 26. She was a little bit under my uh, target age. Uh -huh. This is the one from the website where she looks like Angelina Jolie. Yeah, <laughs> she does. How can you go wrong there? So he had his eyes set on Julia. <laughs> based mostly off of her looks because yeah they had conversations through email but when you go to the foreign affair website or a foreignaffair.com you can search by age weight and then you go in there and it's pretty much a meat market there's no like oh enter things that you're interested in or enter your goals for life it's just look at all these pictures of women in your age and weight range so he hops on a plane to kiev to attend this ice cream social type event with a bunch of foreign guys and you Ukrainian women. Well, me at the social. I'm coming to basically try to sweep her off her feet. Uh, just waiting. This is last hour and a half of waiting is just driving up a wall. <sighs> something a little special. All the other guys, they go out and buy roses. I wanted to get something that would last, hopefully as long as the relationship. So, one gold rose. You know why normal guys go with a normal rose, Bobby? Because they're trying to avoid being super over the top like this. But this is what sets Bobby apart. This is what makes Bobby not like other guys. Hopefully it gets through this and everything will be okay. I'll be either really happy or uh, really sad. Bobby, I'm going to have to politely ask you to stop. Like, why? It's just, really, it's statements like this that make me wonder, like, why you got yourself in this situation where everything comes down to the ice cream social and this chick. You spent $10,000 just emailing one girl that you haven't talked to on the phone, you haven't video chatted with, like, ugh. All right, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's just see what happens at the social. He's still got a chance let's find out if he'll either really happy or uh, really sad really happy or uh, really sad this is like prom for old guys that's the way i'm looking at it which is nice since i never went to prom so. nice, really nice. thank you let's talk about the cleaning lady for a second because Everybody talks about the cleaning lady, how she's more age appropriate for him, how she's flirting with him, and how he just says thank you and walks away like a total idiot. Oh, Bobby, yo, what about this cleaning girl? What's going on here? She looks nice as hell. Go, go walk over there, check her out, see what's up. Maybe she'll go to the social. There's a nice, lovely woman right in front of you calling you nice, seeing like, damn, Bobby, you looking good. 
And is she more age appropriate for Bobby? Definitely. Is she pretty? Definitely. She's really cute. I'm not gonna lie. But like, is a service person paying a customer a compliment? I think she's just being polite. I don't think she's actually flirting with him. If you've ever worked in the service industry, you'll just say stuff like this all the time. It doesn't have any meaning. And Bobby, you gotta think about it from Bobby's perspective. He has been talking to this girl for seven or eight months. He's got his sights set on her. He doesn't want to be infidelitous with this very nice looking cleaning lady I'm sort of hoping to have a table off by ourselves the whole night and we'll have a translator because she, she doesn't speak English I don't do, do Russian it's funny that Bobby called it prom for old guys, because this reminds me a lot of my prom experience. I was alone, I was drinking a Shirley Temple instead of champagne, except I was out on a deck area so that I didn't have to watch all of the people having more fun than me. And also, you don't speak Russian, she doesn't speak English, did you ever have any conversation throughout this seven to eight months about like, hey, are you planning on learning any English? Like, if this all goes ideally and you bring her back to the States, what, are you gonna have a translator in the house the entire time? So, we can just treat that as our first date. Every time I see someone with black hair walk in the door, my heart goes, oh, no, it's not her. Oh, not her. When I did my search, I looked for certain specific things. I like women that have black hair, blue eyes, people that are smart, that are independent, someone that's gonna make me want to be a better mate. I love how the director, whoever's putting this together, knows exactly what they're doing. They're like panning around the room, showing women with black hair and blue eyes, being like, Bobby, maybe you should mingle with some of the women who are actually there right now, dude. Your climactic moment is going to happen any minute. Yeah, we're hoping. When the guys come over, uh, they have their own set of expectations, which may be on target and may not be on target. But they think, oh, gee, I've been writing to uh, Irina, Svetlana, Elena. I've been writing to all these women, and they write to me, and I wrote to them. I told them I was coming over, and maybe that works, and maybe that doesn't. This guy is letting us see behind the curtain so hardcore right now. He should have given Bobby a talk before this mixer event being like, I know you've been messaging this one chick, but you might want to mix with some of these wicked attractive women in the room right now because she might not come through. They don't always come through. I love how Bobby tries to convince John, the organizer, that he's happy either way, and John's like, yeah, I don't know if you should be happy. You spent thousands and thousands of dollars. You could have gone on a much longer vacation for much cheaper, dude. I thought she was going to show up. I really did. Um, so I made sure I was staying off by myself because I didn't want to have to fend off other women trying to keep them away while I'm trying to wait for her. You know, I wanted to come in here to this place to meet this person. And now we don't, I don't know what's going on. I honestly wish that I could have been Bobby's wingman through this entire event. I know I have the same tendency to just sit off by myself waiting for that special person, but think about it this way. If she comes and she sees you mingling with other people, you're gonna look like a social butterfly. It's not gonna be a bad thing. You can always tell those women, oh, one moment, I have to talk to the woman that I came here for. Like, it's not gonna be a big deal if you have to interrupt a conversation to meet the woman of your dreams. But if you're sitting off by yourself, one, you ruin the entire night if she doesn't come there and two if she comes there she's gonna be like oh this guy's just hanging out by himself waiting around for me i don't think this is the ideal plan for this night and oh my god i just noticed this you can see the gold rose in the bag never taken out so sad so how are you feeling that's like anybody would feel <laughs> definitely not good so i had a conversation with john this morning said you know the, the lady i'm talking to online the lady I'm, I'm writing to works full-time in, in a tourist agency Monday through Friday, half a day Saturdays, and isn't a student. And the person that Max is talking to is a student half-time. I said, you know, I've been writing to this lady, you know, we're, we're almost daily for, for months now. Emails are $10 a pop going and coming. So I'm probably out 10 grand. My biggest fear is that it was a scam. 
think you might be on to something with that scam thing here, Bobby. But, like, I understand he was trying to be optimistic, but when something seems too good to be true, it probably is. And this isn't even too good to be true. You've paid half of the price of a brand new Toyota Corolla to get to this point, Bobby. That she's writing to 50 or 60 guys, and she's getting a cut of the fees for the emails going back and forth. John said he's concerned about that, too. So he's trying to find out what's really going on. As he said, you know, well, there's other women to meet. I said, I didn't come here to meet other women. It's not what I was here for. And that's why I think that Bobby has pure and wholesome intentions. He did come to build a relationship with a specific girl. He's not here just to smash some random Ukrainian chick, but I do think he's too focused on her appearance and not as much on her character, and that's going to become really apparent very soon. Nash just called me and told me that she'd be down there at 5 o'clock in the lobby. So They finally got a hold of uh, Julia. And she is supposed to be coming here in about half an hour, hour. Uh... Hey, Bobby, can I just make one small suggestion? Can you maybe ditch the supermarket bag that contains the gold rose box? I feel like the box is good enough protection on its own and it just makes it seem much less classy. For our first date. I have to go in there, approaching it like she's honest and, and all that, and hoping that I'm not being screwed. It was at this moment Jackson knew. He fucked how, up. How do you know? How do you tell? We've been writing for about seven, eight months now. I was wondering what your feeling is on the relationship. What's the chance for public? And what do you say? Um, we've been writing for so long, I was hoping that we'd be able to move on. I came here to see you. That's the only reason I came, was to see if if you wanted to move maybe further in a relationship. Do you feel like she was the woman that was writing to you? Is it just me, or does she look like she's genuinely about to cry in this moment? Like, I feel like she is extremely overwhelmed. I think she has never even spoken to Bobby before. My theory is that the translator was the one writing the emails this entire time. Do you feel like she was the woman that was writing to you? Uh, I had some questions and doubts. Um, Translation, this is definitely not the person he was writing to. Because the pictures I showed her were pictures of things that she's seen before. The house, the yard, my work. <laughs> if she wasn't the one writing the letters, does it matter? It would have. Um, and it probably should. But what I don't want to do is for me to overthink and I cause the problem that isn't really there. Because, honestly, I, I can't get this girl out of my mind. I'm sorry, guys. I gotta be real with Bobby for a second. Bobby, you're not creating the problem by calling this girl and this company out on their BS. You created the problem by spending so much money emailing her, spending money to come out here. They created the problem by scamming you into this situation. Red flags are being shoved in your face, and you're just, like, pushing them out of the way. Like, what's the meaning of these things? It's just obstructing my view of this attractive woman. And just continuing to be real with Bobby, I've been in your situation. I've ignored red flags and gotten screwed over for it. But you need to learn to respect those red flags and respect your gut feelings. Take care of yourself and live in reality. And before we get to the conclusion of Bobby's journey here, I think he's fallen victim to sunk cost fallacy, which is something that we can all fall into, which is where we've wasted a lot of money, time, or emotional energy into somebody or a situation, and we continue to go with it and invest more and more, thinking that we'll eventually get our payoff, and I don't think it's coming for Bobby. Uh, something that's special and beautiful and unique shouldn't be alone. They should come in Paris. I was hoping I may not be, you know, beautiful and that unique, but I'm hoping that maybe we could be a pair. Bobby, one thing that I've learned over the years is even though self-deprecation might be a defense mechanism, it's not super attractive to women, and you're definitely not not beautiful, and from what we've seen, you seem like a pretty unique guy, so just be confident. <laughs> you, are, you are very inspiring. <laughs> Uh, he's whipping out the rose. Do you want to come to America and marry me? 
Hey, yeah, I'm not sure if you're the girl I've been emailing for eight months. I've spent $10,000 on you and we don't speak the same language whatsoever. But, uh, you, you want to get married? Uh, commit to each other for the rest of our lives? <laughs> Let's move into this direction. Okay. Did you see the confidence from Bobby there? She says yes, and he's just like, okay, yeah, sounds good. He's chilling out now. He's showing some confidence. So what was your impressions of tonight? <sighs> I think it went really well. I think I'm engaged now, so I would have to say it. it's going really well. Did you see the change in Bobby's expression? He's like, I think I'm engaged now. And he does a big smile. And then he says, so I think it's going really well. And then he gets all somber. Like, I'm going to show it in slow motion so you can actually see it happening. Okay. It's going really well. Did you get her email address? Uh, no, got to still go through the, the service because I need to have the translations. Huh. So we'll go through that. Uh, I can ask her through that if she wants to give me her email address. I don't know if she has one. Uh, didn't even think to ask. You didn't, you didn't get her email? That's not a good sign, Bobby. I'm engaged. She's very was a very attractive lady. This is what concerns me about Bobby, though, because he just mentions her being attractive. He doesn't really mention vibing well or anything about the way that it felt to be with her other than it was cool to be around a beautiful girl and kiss her and stuff. And I feel like that's a big problem. Thinking that maybe something's going to happen, but still had that nagging feeling that something was going to something was wrong. I mean, you left thinking you were engaged. I was I left thinking that we were going to get married. responding very very frequently but every time I would ask her something personal she just never answered the question so it really started bothering me eventually I just gave up I said listen you either got to answer the questions or that's it I'm done I don't want to talk to you anymore so she sent me one final letter saying that she was hurt you know I wasn't the person she thought I was I was like well okay <laughs> it was over Okay, good for you, Bobby. You know, it took you a long time to finally do it, but you finally put your foot down. I think you might actually be growing here. So Bobby thinks that he was scammed in this situation, which I feel is pretty accurate. They decided to remove her from the website, saying that she was the problem, saying that they did nothing wrong whatsoever. But I honestly think that, in my personal opinion, not trying to slander or defame anybody, but that this is the system that a foreign affair works on. I believe that there are some real girls on the website that are actually interested in getting in relationships with people, and then I think there are other girls whose pictures are just used to entice these people. So Bobby is back home, living his best life, playing some Ratchet and Clank on that sweet PS3 3D TV. After all this, I got depressed for a while. Uh, it really it definitely affected me. I can totally imagine that would be really hard to go through. I mean, imagine arriving home, like, waking up the next day after this trip and realizing that you just wasted so much money, time, and emotional energy. Finally worked through it. Pretty much stopped trying to date anything like that. I think that is a really good idea, Bobby. I'm glad that you, like, settled down and you're like, maybe I need to work on myself right now, figure out what I'm doing, maybe try a different strategy. I think it's a really good idea that you've stopped dating. Until just recently. I fear I might try it one more time. Wait, wait, no, Bobby, that's the that's the Foreign Affair website. That's the website that scammed you for $10,000. Don't go back there. This is her, huh? Yeah, this is Vicka. Bobby, this is another 27-year-old model on the website that scammed you. Do anything but this. Do, do you ever just feel like you're just writing a photo? Yeah.
Bobby, I honestly had some hope for you. I thought you were learning from this. It seemed like you had grown through this experience for a moment. I mean, you went through a period of depression, and I'm glad you're out of that. But this is not the solution. You should do anything but what you're currently doing. There's nothing wrong with having standards. There's nothing wrong with being into attractive women. I mean, you might want to chase something more realistic, but whatever you do, don't go back through the website that you spent 10000 on to get nothing at all but an afternoon noon with a woman. I really hope that you thought through this and maybe seeing how this documentary came out or seeing some of the videos that have been made about you has made you change your mind and take a different approach for this. I mean, even being a sugar daddy would be much better than what you're currently doing because at least you'd most likely get something out of this. I really hope the best for you, dude. It's been like probably eight years since this documentary initially came out, maybe seven years or something like that, and I hope that Bobby's gotten better in that time. I did try to reach out to him, and I, I couldn't manage to get in contact with him, so we won't get a word from Bobby, but I hope he's in a better place, and I hope you guys can all learn from his story. Skate on to the best of your abilities, guys. Make sure you're drinking more water, and since we can't help Bobby, just learn from Bobby, and don't get yourself into a situation like this.